Well, I decided that I would like to build a computer from scratch that runs CPM as its operating system. So I did, and here it is. And mm, it's a bit of a rat's nest, actually. Pretty bad, and uh, it doesn't work. Uh, it's well, it sort of partially almost works some of the time, uh, but not very well. And I think I've only ever once got it to boot up to the um, A prompt that you get under CPM. So I think I need to start from scratch. So just to describe what this thing is, um, CPM is an operating system from the late 1970s, early 80s. CPM came before DOS and DOS came before Windows. And it is based around the Z80 microprocessor, Z80 CPU. So just in here somewhere, buried under all this mess of wires, there is a Z80 and um, it's actually a it's got Zilog written on it, and it is, um, it's not an ancient Z80 from the 1970s or 80s, though. It's, I think, quite a recent one because it runs at 20 megahertz. Whereas I think the original one ran at about 2 megahertz or something, and certainly the Z80A that I had in my Sinclair ZX81 ran at 4 megahertz, but this is a much more recent one. And it has occurred to me that I should actually pronounce it Z80, not Z80, but that's probably the correct pronunciation, but I'm going to say Z80. So this thing then, this little tiny computer, is based around the Z80. You can see also I've got um, an Arduino on here, which I'm using for the input and output. Uh, I've got an EEPROM on here, which I'll talk about at some other point. And buried down under there, I've got 64K of RAM. So Oh, and a little bit of decoding logic that I was trying out a few bits and pieces here. And I think that is why, due to my decoding, address decoding logic, I think that's why this mess of wires isn't working. So what I do, what I do is start from scratch, go through each stage, get the thing working properly, which I think it can do, and um, describe each step in some detail and test each bit as I go along. Because this circuit, I pretty much just made it up as I went along. Um, as you can probably tell, and it's not very stable. Thinking about it, I'm running at, I don't know, kind of megahertz frequencies here. I've got my computer right next to it. I've got my phone standing next to it. I've got wires hanging around everywhere. I've got an Arduino running in here. There's radio, noise, interference, electrical capacitance issues with all these flying wires. Oh, and here, up here I've got an SD card. Is it a, um, micro SD card sitting in here with the uh, with CPM operating system on it. So it's pretty much doomed to failure, actually. thinking of, The more I think about it, the worse it is. So that's why I'm going to start the game. So let's take a look at the components then that make up, um, or that you could use to make up a computer that runs CPM. So the most important thing is the Z80 CPU, which is at the heart of the whole thing. Um, and I think CPM ran on a number of different processors when it was at its height, sort of in the late 70s, early 80s. But the main one was the Z80. That was certainly the most popular one for running CPM on. And I like the Z80 processor. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for it. I think it was the first assembly language that I... Yeah, it was definitely the first assembly language I ever learned to program in. And um, you can see on this one, it is made by Zilog. I'm not sure what the date, whether that 0043 means it was made in 2000. Certainly though, it says that it's in the name Z84C0020PEG, is that or C? The 20 is the 20 megahertz bit. So it's running, it could potentially run five times faster than my humble Z80A did in my um, well, I had an Amstrad CPC 464, which had one of those in, actually. So it's going to be running faster than that. And the reason I mentioned the Amstrad CPC 464 is because I had some floppy disk drives, a quite a weird, non-standard 3-inch floppy disk drive for the 464, and that ran CPM from what I remember. So hopefully... Um, well, no, it was a good operating system. It was a good operating system, but I'm hoping to see it running here five times as fast as it ran on the Amstrad because it was, I remember it being pretty slow. 
So that's the first component. Second component is this RAM. Look at this. Um, 64K of RAM. Now, 64K of RAM back in the day was quite a big deal. These days, well, all of these components, I'm buying them. Off. Oh, look, legs bent on it. <laughs> all of these components are bought off eBay and they cost, you know, a pound each or something like that. Have I killed that? I hope that's okay. Um, but back in the day, that was a lot of RAM. So you can see on there, 61512. So the way you read these things is the 512 tells you how many bits of memory. So you divide it by eight. So 512 divided by eight is 64. So that's a 64K of RAM, static RAM. That is not dynamic RAM because you don't want to be messing around with dynamic RAM, even though the Z18 would actually support it. Um, and there's not a whole lot to say about that. Uh, apart from that, what year is that? Is that made in 96? I don't know. I don't know how you read those dates, but um, it's 64K of RAM, and I will hopefully be able to find a picture of an original um, CPM machine from the 70s or the, or the 80s. And people dreamt of owning a CPM machine with a 64K of RAM on it back in the day. But now, as I say, about a quid, and maybe probably less than a quid, and you can get one of those. I've also got an EEPROM on there. Uh, all my EEPROMs, so I stick a big sticker on saying, e well, it's an EEPROM, electrically erasable, programmable, read-only memory. And as I've stuck a sticker over it, you can't read what that is, but it's an AT286, no, 28C256. So that's a 32K EEPROM, and I'm using that to boot up uh, the computer originally due to the booting trickiness that you have with um, disk-based operating systems. But it's not really key to this thing. I'm just using it to help me out a little bit. Um, it's pretty standard. And I've got somewhere, let me find it, an EEPROM programmer that I made in order to program EEPROMs, which is here. Uh, this is my homemade EEPROM programmer. Um, featuring an Arduino Nano, uh, sort of like a signature component in just about everything I make. Um, so they plop the EEPROM in here and put it like that. And I've put a dot here to show me which way up it is because I am brilliant at putting in my EEPROMs up the wrong way. Now the other key component on board is one of these Arduino Nanos, um, which is a programmable microcontroller. And actually, Probably that microcontroller is more powerful than the Z80, or possibly roughly equivalent to the power of the Z80. Um, but that's got everything on board, including this rather nice USB, what is that one, mini? Anyway, whatever USB, slightly old fashioned USB connector that is. Um, and so what I'm doing is on my computer, I am using the, um, the Arduino for the input and output, because I'm quite interested in the Z80 part of it and the memory parts of it and everything. But at this stage, I don't want to get bogged down with creating a video display and a keyboard driver and everything. So what I'm doing is I'm using the Arduino connected via USB to my computer, and then the, US, the, um, the Z80 talks to the Arduino, and the Arduino talks to my computer, so I can type on my computer uh, and I can see the output of the of CPM on my computer in a little um, console program on the computer. And that means that, um, ooh, well, that started it up. Um, and that means that uh, I just cut out all the complexity of a keyboard and a screen at this stage of the game, and I'll put those in later, I think. Uh, but I just want to see it actually working. So I'm cutting out all the complicated, complicated parts of input and output by using an Arduino to do the keyboard and the screen. I'm also using the Arduino to talk to this antiquated SD card um, reader, or essentially a reader and writer. So I've got a micro SD card, I plug the micro SD card into the SD card adapter, the SD card itself upside down annoyingly I probably can't even do this yeah plugs into this uh, ooh, plugs into the um, SD card reader and the SD card reader then talks um, SPI 
language to the Arduino and the Arduino talks to the Z80. So it cuts out the complexity of me having to make the Z80 speak SPI language to that um, to the SD card. So all my information that would normally be on floppy disks, because CPM is a disk, a floppy disk based system, all of it is instead on the SD card. So all I've done is I've made some directories on the SD card for each floppy disk drive. So for drive A, I've made a directory called A. For drive B, I've made a directory called B, etc., etc. And CPM supports 16 floppy disks or hard disks concurrently. So really, you can make as many as you want on an SD card because you've got bags of space on there. And so that's how I've simulated floppy disks um, because I'm not that interested in connecting up real floppy disks to this thing. And certainly I think that would just cause all sorts of problems. I mean, I can't even get the thing working without them. So I don't stand a chance if I tried to do it with them. Uh, and that is the basis of the system. Of course, there's also a clock, which I'm currently using uh, 555 timer as the clock, which might not be the best idea. And I think in my next version, I'm going to use a proper crystal oscillator. Um, and there's a little bit of glue logic, as I said, which has caused all the, I think, which is causing all the problems because I've used a 74HC02. And I think I should have used a 74HCT02 to do the, to do the memory addressing glue logic. So I think I am going to start from scratch, do it properly and get this thing working.